You see what I have to deal with on a daily basis, guys. Oh, that's loud. I'm going to take a picture. Bye, wave to Martijn. What's up, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this POV review by Autotop and Out. My name is Max, and today we've got a very special Tootham. We've got two of the most exciting cars out right now. We've got on the left the all new Porsche 992 911 Carrera S, and on the right we've got the Aston Martin Vantage, the all new one. And today is going to be a very special video because we are going to score them on five different categories. So we are going to start with looks, then move on to sound, performance, handling and quality. So today you get to be a huge part of the result of this test because I'm going to take a picture. I'm going to take a lot because these LEDs are flickering like crazy. Okay, and we're going to go to YouTube and I'm going to make a community post and I'm going to type ask you guys who wins in the looks department post okay guys so now the post is live and at the end of this video i'm going to check and see which one has won this battle of the looks so i'm going to show you around it you sort of already know which one looks more aggressive it's the aston martin it looks stunning if you ask me uh, the porsche is more Understated, I would say, classic 911. The Vantage is just so aggressive. It's, it looks like a fighter jet. It is so wide and muscly, and it has a lot of stance. It looks almost predatory, especially from the front. Uh, we've got this very cool rear bumper, uh, which is sort of also the diffuser. Uh, I think this is an option. You can also get this in black. Uh, so the carbon fiber is an option. We've also got the sport exhaust, so the upgraded exhaust. That means you get four tailpipes. If you get the usual, the normal exhaust, you just get two. Um, as I said, aggressive diffuser, it sort of sticks out. This gorgeous trunk. I mean, it looks so stunning. This very wide shoulder area. Uh, the flies already have taken a seat on the Aston. Uh, we've got this air duct right there, carbon fiber side skirt, some black wheels and a very aggressive front bumper with again a lot of carbon fiber and it sticks out like, like it's going to get you, like it's going to eat you. It looks predatory, it just, it looks like it's going to suck you up. It has a very big bonnet, uh, very narrow headlights I would say but the proportions are really good. Moving on to the 911. Uh, you've seen this car in an earlier review. Uh, you've seen this car too. But it's very cool to see the both together and see the different approach to a sports car. So don't forget to subscribe guys and hit the notification bell to receive updates when we upload a new video. And follow us on Instagram at autotopnl. Today I'm going to drive it along this road, we're going to drive them together. Then we'll do a 0 to 100 km an hour test. Uh, then we'll take it to the Autobahn, do 100 to 200 km an hour tests with both. So that's the performance department sorted out. Whoever wins those two measurements wins the performance. Then I'll switch to that one and I'll drive that on the B road as well. So it should be a lot of fun. Uh, I'm going to start in the Porsche. Martijn is going to start in the Vantage. Enjoy. Okay. Start it up. So this car also has the performance exhaust, but it's nowhere near as loud as that Aston. Key not detected. Art hard. Jesus Christus. <laughs> Got it! You see what I have to deal with on a daily basis, guys. Okay, you ready now? If you have a very expensive car, hit it. If you have anything valuable, never give it to Martijn because he will lose it in about two minutes. <laughs> Oh, 
that's loud. Jesus. So the two couldn't be more different sound-wise because you have that ridiculously loud barking V8 and you have this really tight flat six. Uh, both have their merits, both, you know, both have something special. And we have uploaded a rev battle and asked you guys which sound you prefer. So the Aston is the winner in that respect. So that's the first win for the Aston Martin in the category sound. All right, so next we are going to use the GPS performance box and measure this car's zero to 100 kilometers an hour. So zero to 100 kilometers an hour in this car, 3.7 seconds, but we have the sport chrono pack, so that should be 3.5. Let's see if we can get near that. Foot on the brake, sport plus. Launch control. Oh, struggling for traction. 3.54, so that actually is right on the money. 3.5 seconds to 100 kilometers an hour. I'm just going to leave that on there for the 100 to 200 measurement on the Autobahn. Handling. Well, this car feels incredible. This car is the benchmark. That is why we took a competitor and this together. Because in the review of this car, I said, this is the benchmark. This performs on all levels and it performs really good on all levels. But does it excel on all levels? That is the question. Driving wise, you know, this engine is beautiful. The steering feels incredible. They have really mastered that electric power steering. It feels so, so freaking good. You feel really connected to the car and the car sort of turns around you. So I haven't driven the Aston yet, so I can't judge the handling yet. So we are going to do that uh, when we switch and then I will let you know which one has won. Um, the next category is the quality. Uh, that's basically about the cabin, about how the car feels and well, I have to say that this car feels so well put together. It feels so solid. Um, it feels like, like nothing else really. There are very few sports cars that feel so well put together. And the Aston is going to have to be really, really good to beat this one. But we'll check it out when once we get into the Aston to see how that one uh, looks, feels, how the finishes are. Okay, here we are. Uh, 100 to 200 measurements. Reset that one. Here we go. So that's an eight second 100 to 200. So as you can see, they are very similar in performance, in speed. I'm actually not gaining, not getting too close. So they seem to be sort of similar, uh, but I got an 8.0, so 3.5, 0 to 100 kilometers an hour, 100 to 200, 8.0. Eight, eight seconds flat. going to switch here. I'm very, 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 very curious to see how the Aston feels compared to this. All right, let's switch it up and see how they compare. Bye guys. Bye. Wave to Martijn. Bye guys. Martijn is going to return the Porsche and I'm going to enjoy the Aston. Okay, so I haven't driven this at all. I'm not kidding. Um, We'll get the drag app in there as well because we are going to measure the 100 to 200 on the autobahn bye okay 
drive and I want track mode and this in sport mode I think would be best for the Ultraman. Here we go. Oh wow, I'm super excited to see how this feels. Woo! Feels very, very different. Firstly, you know, the cockpit is totally different. As I said, oh! As I said, it, it sort of looks like a fighter jet and it feels like that in here as well. It's, it's much more narrow and visibility is not as good either, I would say. Um, that's just my first. Wow, it feels, it feels very light. Even though this is a little bit heavier than the Porsche, this feels lighter somehow. I think the steering rack is a little bit quicker as well. So we've got fixed pedal shifters. Oh, man, this thing is loud. Oh, it sort of sounds like a Mustang, like a V8 Mustang. Oh, Jesus. Okay, uh, 100 to 200 measurement. I want automatic mode, yes. Full throttle. Wow, the gearbox is actually pretty damn quick. Sh upshifts are really quick. So that was a 7.9, 100 to 200. 7.9, that's one tenth quicker than the Porsche. How does it feel on the Autobahn? Well, compared to the Porsche, it feels a little bit more nervous, a little bit more twitchy. The Porsche feels more like a Panamera almost, and this feels like a proper sports car. 280. Vipers are going crazy. 294, 297. Brakes feel really good as well, although I do believe that the brakes in the Porsche feel a little bit more solid. Oh, but man, this car does feel a lot more aggressive and it has to be said, it does feel more exciting, more... It's more of an experience, <laughs> to say the least. Okay, we're going to get off here. I'm going to shift manually. So of course we've got that four liter bi-turbo V8 from AMG at the front. And you can sort of tell by listening to the sound. Aston Martin did do their thing to it uh, to make it sort of feel more like an Aston engine. And they also mounted different exhaust to make it sound more like an Aston. So let's move on to the quality department. I think that this looks really good. We've got leather everywhere. Uh, we've got this crazy squared off steering wheel, which is pretty cool. Uh, we've got some digital dials. We've got an older Mercedes-Benz system right here. Uh, we, we got, we've got carbon fiber. We've got a lot of buttons and the seats are beautiful as well. But I do think that the Porsche takes this because one, well, the wipers started going crazy at like 280 kilometers an hour and the Porsche just feels so solid that it's just so hard to compete with it. Yes, this, is, this looks more exciting and this has sort of a more designed look, uh, but I think even though the Porsche looks a little bit dull, everything does really feel uh, very expensive and even though it does look really cool and feel good in this car I do think that the Porsche takes it so that's one win for the Porsche onwards to handling well as I said on the Autobahn this car feels a lot more nervous and twitchy than the Porsche does oh that 
that's such a loud bang. Uh, but to begin with, the brakes feel good, but not as good as in the Porsche. The turn-in feels great. It's very, very light. Um, and that means that you sort of feel like you can do great stuff with it because it, the, the front feels really controllable and that means that you have more confidence going into a corner. And because the engine is right there, it's sort of mid-engine because the engine is right behind the front axle. Uh, but because it is there, it has a perfect weight distribution of 50-50. And I must say that it does feel rather excellent. It also has Skyhook adaptive dampers. But I do think that the Porsche gives you a little bit more confidence. So we are going to do the 0 to 100 test. Uh, I have to turn off traction control. That means that I have to keep this pushed for five seconds. Then it goes into track mode for DSP. Then I have to do it again. And it's switched completely off. There it is. Full throttle. 2000 RPM. That's not a very aggressive launch control. We're going to do it again because apparently I have to shift myself. I didn't know that. Active. There we go. Three point eight seconds to one hundred kilometers an hour. Um, it should do 3.6. Uh, that means that the Porsche wins the 0 to 100 with 3.5 seconds and the Aston wins the 100 to 200 with 7.9. Let's stop here. Oh, those downshifts are ridiculous. We'll take a look at the results of the test. So it's been about, I don't know, let's, let's see how long it has been. It has been 33 minutes and we've got 60 responses. I, I guess I'll have to count them. All right, I'll just first count the Aston. So that's one, two. So 21 for the Porsche, 24 for the Aston. So that means that the Aston takes the Lux department as well. So guys, that means that we've got one point for the Aston in the Lux department. We've got another point for the Aston in the sound department. We've got one point for the Porsche when it comes to handling and another point for the Porsche when it comes to quality. And that leaves us with the tie for the performance because the Aston won the 100 to 200 kilometers an hour and the Porsche won the 0 to 100 kilometers an hour, which means it's a tie. So that's some proper consumer advice by Autotop and L. Uh, anyway, they are both so different. They have a completely different approach to a sports car. I think, you know, this car looks a lot more extreme, a lot more aggressive than the Porsche. Uh, but I do think that the Porsche would be more suitable to drive every day. So that's sort of how I would and this review um, if i would go to a track i would take this one if i had to drive it every day i would take the porsche maybe that's the conclusion i come to today so i hope you guys enjoyed the video you can subscribe by clicking the big button you can also check out this pov review or go check out this playlist of pov reviews we've made a lot so go check it out and i hope to see you at the next one bye guys